Look, Carter would have given you regardless. That's the way prison works. Don't blame yourself. As uh, Carter was dying, he told me, Franco says hi. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter, Jason. Carter saw something in me. I made him think he can do anything. Uh, you, you, you survived. Okay, that's what matters. You're out of prison, you're free, and Carter is dead. You said that Franco had Carter in his exhibit. Yeah. Was I in the exhibit too? There was a um, copy of your prison ID photo on display. But I don't think anybody knew who you were except for me. Okay. Thanks for telling me the truth. I mean, I... I know you could have covered it up, but you didn't, and I appreciate you telling me that. You can't change. You can't change what happened. Michael, you gotta focus on your life as it is now. Find a way to move on. I almost killed Mr. Bauer. I was about to snap his neck like he taught me. I would have done it, Jason. You don't have to let the anger take over. You can find a way to control it. Maybe you need to teach me that. Okay, so let's put together what we know. Well, Franco lures me and Jason to L.A. It turns out this thing's all about the number 66. Yeah, and there's a 66 and Aiden's hospital ID number. So basically, that kidnapping was random. Yeah, it's all about the number. Everything at Franco's exhibit was about the number 66, too. Okay. I mean, complete with recreations of places he's been to in Port Charles, with a, with a double of Sam inside a plexiglass box. It was like an alternate universe. Everything was basically to go Jason. Yeah, and, and in the meantime, Franco showed up on the hospital monitors, said that he took the baby. And at some point, it switched over to a live feed, and Franco almost had to have had tech support to make that happen. Jason chases Franco up to the roof. We think he pushes Franco off, but it's not Franco. So while Franco's faking his, his own death in Los Angeles, a nurse that he planted in the hospital with a not too coincidental name, Jane Morgan, handed off the baby to someone who in turn got Aiden to Franco. And Nurse Morgan was probably expecting a big payoff. Instead, she gets killed. You know, this still all tracks back to Jason. He's the only person we know that spoke to Franco in LA. <sighs> okay, then. We go talk to Jason. We hear everything that Frank told him word for word. Let's go. I completely understand that you have been through hell in the past few months. I mean, considering everything that's gone on with Kiefer, blaming your father seems like a pretty convenient substitute. If you're about to give me this, honey, try so hard to be a good father's bitch, No, please. I'm not. I'm just letting you know that Sonny, your father, has a lot of issues. And maybe instead of repeating the same mistakes, you can learn from them. What do you mean, repeating? Come on, Chrissy. I mean, for starters, your father can hold a grudge longer than anyone I have ever met. That's not what I'm doing. Just... Think about it for a second, please. You, you, okay, look, okay, fine. You, your father wasted a, a lot of time being angry with Mike because he left him to the mercy of his stepfather. You know that his childhood was hell and he stayed really, really angry. And look at what he, look at what he threw away because of it. A dad who actually wanted to be close. I mean, I, out of anyone, I wish I had that. I'd take that over anything. But in some small way, Sonny still blames Mike for everything that went wrong in his life. I'm not blaming my dad for my problems. Come on. Sure you are. You are using all that anger to justify your self-destructive behavior. You went after Johnny Zakara. This is starting to sound like a lecture. No, please, I'm... I'm not trying to lecture you, please. Your parents have given you a really, really good life. You've never had to work. A day in your life, you get whatever you want. Your your parents practically fall all over themselves to make you happy. 
all I'm trying to say is that blaming other people for your own problems, you kind of lose control of your life. So I'm supposed to just ignore how unfair Dad's being to Michael? This isn't about Michael right now. I just want you to focus on yourself and take the time to figure out what it is that you really want because if you spend your entire life with a grudge against your father, you are not going to be happy. It's time to take this thing with Santa to the next level. Oh, I hate it when you say that. No, no, I've already nabbed two of his big suppliers, and the rest of them are going to jump ship when they find out he's got no security. Okay, yeah, assuming the proof of that exists. That proof does exist, and it's going to piss him off, and when Sonny gets pissed, Sonny gets vulnerable. And it's also come to the point where Sonny blows up cars, in case you forgot. Okay, Sonny can't risk another big move like that. He's too exposed with no way to fight back, and when his customers see that, Sonny's going to be out of business. I'm having a, a private conversation here about a very... Uh, personal situation, so. Absolutely right. I shouldn't have said a word. I apologize. You know what, wait, I, I'm actually interested no, in what you no, have to no, say. No, no, I should not have interrupted you. Yeah, but you did, and now she's all curious, so by all means, let's hear what you got to say. You serious? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, speaking personally, from my own experience, having a child with Sonny Corinthos is a difficult, if not dangerous situation. I knew that at the age of 15, which, which is why I chose to uh, raise my child as a single teenage mother. If I, had, if I had a chance with Dante, I might have had a relationship with him. I thought it was more important to keep our child away from the mob. And I would think, given your line of work, that you would see things the same way. Oh, believe me, I do. All I want is what you used to have, Miss Falconery. A beautiful, intelligent child with no connection to Sonny at all. 